YouTube. Hey, and thank you for tuning in to yet another Hanging With Heavy video. Hey, I'm back on the power hammer today, and I'm building a couple parts, so you hang with me. We're going to go ahead and work on um, the part that holds the um, bearing in place for when it spins round and round and round, you know. So anyhow, go ahead, hang in here with Heve, and uh, we're going to be working on the crosshead weldment part number, um, what is that part number? Part number 212 on page 8 of your uh, guide. Now hold on, I can't show you the picture anymore. No, 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 seems that somebody got their thong in uproar because I was showing the um, actual page and apparently that's not allowed. So, um, copyright laws and all that. Actually, I thought I was doing the guy, old boy, a favor and instead it looked like I was just pissing him off a little bit. But nonetheless, let's go ahead on with our power hammer build. We're going to build a couple parts today, so hang tight. Now let's take a look at the parts we've got here. Number one, this part right here is number 31, the cross head side. Okay, and it's a quarter inch thick by three inches by six inches. So quarter inch by three by six. And you're going to notice that I've got some holes in here. All right. And then this part here is part number 32. Okay. And it's one quarter inch thick, three by six. And you need two part 31s. To make this part, part number 212, cross head weldment. That's on page 8 of your plans. Now, let's take a look here. I took mine out and took them to the uh, local fab shop where they had a laser cutter and I had my parts laser cut. I don't have a big drill press, <clears throat> so this saved me a lot of time. Not only that, these are extremely accurate and if you play your cards right and talk good to the guys there, they might even etch out the layout lines for you so that whenever you go to put it together, you don't have to do a lot of precise measuring. So let's go ahead and see how this thing comes together. Okay, now this is the part that is uh, tacked together and ready to go. And you'll notice I've put some uh, nut and bolt spacers between there to keep this uh, dimension accurate. This dimension right here is to be inch and five eighths and it's, and it's um, let me see, what is it? It is exactly inch and five eighths on the inside. So 13 sixteenths from the center of the hole. See if you can see that. There's a hole down there. 13 sixteenths from the center of the hole to the edge of this plate. 13 sixteenths from the center of this hole to the edge of this plate. Now what I did was, is I took and I used my um, layout die. I found my center point and I scribed a line. I came over 13 sixteenths, scribed another line, and then I assembled my plates. Now once I put them together, I put these clamps between them to kind of hold them in place. And if you've been following along, I use the electrode 6011 to tack with, but I will weld this out with E7018. Now the reason why I only have the double nuts on the outside is because I'm only going to be welding the outside. I'm going to be putting a fillet weld along here and um, when I put that fillet weld in there the tendency of this metal is going to be to pull out. So what I have done is restricted that and um, I'm going to go ahead and put some weld on it. Now then, because I had it clamped up you can see that after welding I'm holding a solid inch and five eighths and I have welded both sides of this with the E7018 electrode. And let's take a look at that for a minute. E7018. I would not suggest using 6010, 6011. I would not suggest using 6013 at all to weld this uh, machine together with. If you're going to use stick welding, you want to use a 7018 electrode. Now, the 70 means that it will weld or hold 70,000 pounds of tensile strength per cubic inch, not square inch, cubic inch. The 1 means it welds in all positions and the 8 and the H4R are definitely um, chemical compositions of the electrode, special characteristics of the electrode. I ran this on direct current, rod positive at about um, 75 amps it's a 332 second electrode and um, you'll find that this will hold it pretty well for you. Do not use a 60 series uh, electrode. 
Now then, here's our part welded out. Um, you'll notice that uh, there is no weld on the inside. Take a look there. Your instructions call for only weld on the outside. So, weld that up with some E7018. Try to end your crater in the middle. And um, you got this part built. Now, last but not least, you're going to add part number 44. This is a clevis pin stop. And it calls for quarter inch round bar, three quarters of an inch long. Now, I didn't have any three quarter, but I was able to use this um, half inch that I had, no problem. And what's going to happen is that you'll grind a flat spot on your clevis, and the clevis will sit against that to keep it from spinning. Now, once you get those last parts on there, this part is done. Now I'm going to go ahead and spray a little paint on her and um, set her aside and mark it as done. Woo! Okay, YouTube. Well, it looks like I've wrapped up that part number 212 on the uh, power hammer build. I hope that helped you out a little bit. It's not a very difficult part to build at all. But I wanted to point out that number one, I had my parts laser cut, which helped me a whole lot. And if you can talk them into it, they'll also you lay out, do the layout lines for you. So um, talk to your fabrication shop about that. It cost me about, um, that part was about 30 bucks to have cut out and materials and everything else. Hey, but you know what? It's kind of chilly out here, but it is a nice day. So you know what I want you to do? You got to reach over there, like, share, subscribe, hit that button for me, okay? And you know what? I'll catch you outside. <laughs>